Welcome back to the Puzzle Shop. This is episode number two of the Sundial production. So, the good news is, there's a prototype. It's missing a few parts up top, but check that out. The planetary gear mechanism. What do you think, Josh? I think it looks really neat. Just looking at it while it moves, it's like, wow. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> wow. That's what I say. You know, it's really cool, and I wouldn't recommend putting this box on a plywood surface otherwise, but just because it's a prototype, the uh, it moves like a tank. Could you, <laughs> could, could you do that? Well, I'm not sure everything's going to stay in place, but uh, yeah, sure. Nope, nope. There it goes. <laughs> anyways that's pretty cool but anyways so the box <laughs> so the box is together and all of the parts more or less work like that we tested out all the different mechanisms and they all kind of work but we spent the entire morning like three or four hours just talking about what we don't like and what we want to change and what's what are the steps that are not completely reliable yeah or yeah just difficult to, mm -hmm. right, to use found out we didn't have enough leverage on one thing yeah so we had to change that you couldn't get enough an, enough grip on something it was too small of a part for you to to use you know and so we're like okay we got to change that but the nice thing is a bunch of this stuff we found like really good ideas for how to make it better and just some things were like well this is a problem and this is a problem so we we're able to find a nice the sweet spot in between where you're able to fix kill two birds with one stone and fix the problem while still making it look better and so i'm really excited to be making our next prototype but i've got a ton of work to do on the fusion design over at the computers so that's where i'm going to spend most of the day and josh is going to spend a bunch of today making all of the dowel pins for this because we have our lathe set up and running which is super exciting we got that set up and running last friday yep. so josh is going to program all the parts by hand just in his head because he knows how to do that <laughs> so that's pretty cool and we're going to make all the dowel pins um for this on that lathe so he's going to run those parts and i'm going to work on the fusion design we're going to bring you guys along and show you all the different stuff we're doing today check out this lathe so what's the deal josh so this is a three-phase lathe, and the motor runs on three-phase, and then the controls here run on just 110. So we just need to make some pins right now. Like uh, this one's a prototype, you could say. It's the first one, pretty much. So it doesn't look right. It's not perfect. Mm -hmm. But um, so we've got a bunch of tools set up here. And first off, we're going to start off with the turning tool here. It's going to face mm -hmm. it off, come across the face. Oh, I'll show you over here. This tool is actually going to come over okay. and spin it, but it'll face it off just like that and then go down roughing the edge mm -hmm. and then it'll back turn finish, put a little mm -hmm. chamfer on the front and then face it off and then it comes over to the drill, it drills that out. Now it's kind of weird because we didn't have a drill for the right size, we don't have a boring bar that small. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually using the drill as a boring bar. We've got the drill off center slightly and at the right rotation mm. so that it can drill this hole oversized pretty yeah. much like a boring one we got this set up to chamfer the hole if we need it um it's not actually in the program right now but we'll see and then this is going to part it cut it off and we'll have a piece mm -hmm. we've got the uh homemade bar feeder right here this is this is the best part of this lathe right here the <laughs> automatic bar feed <laughs> yeah hopefully um so all we've got is an air cylinder here and we've got two airlines which this used to have a parts catcher that was activated by these airlines. It would mm -hmm. shoot out, catch the part, and then come back. Mm -hmm. But instead, we're gonna hook that up to this um, air cylinder here. And mm -hmm. we hook that up to it, we'll be able to activate this and put shoot the bar down or right. advance the bar in the spindle. So the bar goes in the spindle or the wood stock goes in the spindle and it just sits in the spindle. And then as it turns, the whole bar is just riding in the spindle, spinning at like 3000 RPM. But once you cut the part off, and then you're left with this little stump here, you have to like 
if you don't have a barfy, you have to open up the chuck, and then you have to pull it out the right distance, and then you have to clamp on the chuck, and then you press go on your next on your next cycle. But with this, what will this bar feed do? So with the bar feed, is we'll be able to automatically open the chuck or the collet, and uh, and this will just automatically feed it out to a certain point, or it'll probably have a stop. But it'll feed it out to that stop, mm -hmm. and then it'll reclamp it, and then we'll cut the next part. And it'll open automatically, feed it out automatically, reclamp it, cut the next part. So basically, we can start this machine, walk away, and it'll just continually make parts until it's out of bar. Right. And then we come over and load a new bar and do the same thing again. That's so it'll be that's super helpful. Super helpful because we can just turn on the machine, check the first part or two, make sure it's making good parts, then walk away and work on other parts of the box. We don't have to sit at this machine and just keep feeding the bars. No. Every 30 no. seconds. So It'll be more, yeah. hopefully more reliable anyway than, than a person would be. Yeah. Um, so, but this, but it's just so cool because this, Josh made all this last week and um, I don't, we don't know of anybody else who's done like an air cylinder like this for a bar feed, but we think it's going to work and uh, we three, he 3D printed, he designed 3D printed this plastic part. And then there's a little torque, torsion, what, what would you call this screw? Adjustment screw. Adjustment screw so that we have it perfectly lined up to shoot down the center of the uh, cylinder there. Yeah. I'd like to show them the end too, but yeah. it's unfortunately kind of... We'd have to s turn it all on, but we made a swivel end, 3D printed two parts that mm -hmm. would fit on a bearing uh, and, and screw onto the end of the shaft. Mm -hmm. And so the end swivels so that well, as it rides against the material, None of this is going to spin, but obviously the spindle is spinning, mm -hmm. and the bar is going to be sitting against that and spinning, and so the, it'll have a bearing there and it'll heat up right. everything. Okay, so you're going to go to this um, control here and program the parts. Okay, so what's going on, Josh, with the machine? <laughs> oh, problems. No, actually, so it would look like it was coming out pretty nice. We were getting some nice finish on the part, great dimensions. Incredible part. Look at that shine. Great dimensions as far as the X. And the Z was right on too, but I was noticing as I was loading these parts because I was just getting it set, that the bar over here... Every time I had set it, it would, I would have to set it out further and then further and mm. then further. The Z was off tracking. Every time I'd run it, it mm. would be like, I don't know, 15, 20 thousandths further out, maybe. Okay. Um, so that's a big problem because if you run continuous, eventually you're going to be running parts right. three feet away from the spindle. Right. So it, we, the parts, the machine was offsetting, each part was getting farther and farther and farther out. So what's the problem? What's the issue? Um, well, we don't really know. The best we can, we, we're guessing, is the encoders, or this encoder, this mm. encoder. These are kind of a, probably a cheaper encoder, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, we replaced we, these already. Okay. So we're going to look at the encoder, look at where this spins to, see if when it's by itself, it, when it's not moving the machine around, if it tracks itself properly, yeah. spins back to the right place. Because uh, you mentioned on the router, the router has stepper motors, and that it would sometimes lose track if it were running into something or running into right. uh, too much control. resistance. Yeah, yeah. which but we don't think that's likely with the servos, but we're just going to test it just to prove it, right? Yeah. Well, we gotta throw the uh, start the converter. Gotta get the three phase. I don't know what's going to happen here, so don't get too close. <laughs> I don't think we have air. We've got to turn the air on with a nice Quincy compressor. And everybody's going to be able to know how to program this machine after this video. Well, there's no programming involved right now, but sure. <laughs> okay. Okay, so it's reading X negative 7. 
Okay. Which should be over here, I think. Uh, I don't really know. Hold on. Uh, yeah. Thing. I just need to get the whole thing offset thirty-five thousand or thirty-one thousand that way. Okay. Mm, but it's not a good way to measure. So we've had a lot of problems with the lathe recently, but it seems that we finally got our progress to start turning around. So, uh, as it were. yeah, as it were. And uh, Josh pointed out it's kind of a boring job sometimes working with a lathe, but um, sometimes it's kind of fun. But uh -huh. it, it can be boring. Right, it can be boring. All right, I, I don't. Okay, so right now Josh is trying to fix the encoder. We're going to take it off and put it back on again because it's definitely not giving the machine the right feedback even when there's no resistance on the machine. So hopefully this works because we need that leaf to work. Okay, so the good news is we think we fixed it. Due to the brain power and genius of, well, you know what, I'm not going <laughs> to. But uh, I think the set screw was loose on the encoder. And. <laughs> okay, fine. I don't know who had that I thought first. But, anyways, Josh tightened it up, and it looks like the motor is spinning back. All right, so in other news, um, Ben fixing the things in Fusion for our programs, changing our part designs. I have a small dilemma that I need to figure out because um, I'd kind of like to change the whole layout of how the boards. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to replace this whole pallet so that we have more space in between the boards. Um, and that way we'll be able to cut all the way through the board and make a nice square for the laser to cut the tabs off so that we can reference parts right in here up against this square just like this see i have the origin right here in the corner and then we can take the boards off of the laser flip them upside down sorry off of the cnc flip them upside down put them in the laser and we'll be able to cut the small tabs so we can cut the parts through and I'm just thinking it might be nice to make this whole pallet over again so that I have everything spaced so I can do what I want to with that. Which is going to be a whole ton of work because in this computer program when you move these parts there's these little sketches that are on top of them. And moving those sketches with the parts and, and making sure they line up is a lot of work and there is a lot of those sketches because we're doing so much carving on this box so it's gonna be like i don't know hours and hours to do that and then hours to remake this but at the end of the day it's only like hours worth of work <laughs> now but it's gonna pay off through the whole box like if we can just put the things on here cut them clip them put them up All right, well, I made a decision. I'm gonna go ahead and make a new pallet for the CNC. Um, just because there's a few things that I've changed my mind on as far as placement of the boards and and all that. So it's gonna be really good for the sundial. It's just gonna take, you know, four to eight hours of work to switch all that over and set all that up. But it's gonna be more accurate. The parts are gonna be more accurate on the new pallet because it'll be screwed down better and 
it'll be easier to go from the CNC to the laser and we'll be having an easier time of cutting you know doing what I want to do on the laser with better with better origins over here because of the way that everything's set up so looking forward to that um yeah I've just been doing a lot today in fusion and there's still a whole lot to do but the sundial box is really cooking and coming along so I by by the end of next week I think we should be able to start production what do you think Josh Josh is, uh, he's really taking one for the team. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, we need a joke, Josh. Oh, well, you've got a couple of those. <laughs> I cut this out on the laser. This is a piece of leather. It uh, just goes under one of the parts in the sundial box. And it was super easy to just take the sketch right from Fusion and throw it in the laser and they cut this out like incredibly easy on leather and it's the perfect size so that worked out really good so we're gonna be adding some leather in this box and it's gonna be really really cool so I'm, I'm glad that that worked out as good as it did I'm going to wrap it up there as the 3d printer starts a new 24 hour print or 21 hour but um, progress is being made. Super excited about this box. Um, we're getting new levels of uh, accuracy and stuff. So it's, a, it's an exciting box and project to work on. So uh, thanks everybody for watching. And we'll bring you along in another video soon. Take care. Goodbye.